the White House says that President Biden plans to watch little, if any, of former President Trump's impeachment trial when it begins tomorrow in the Senate. Instead, Biden is focused on passing this massive coronavirus relief deal, quote, as quickly as possible. But new fractures in the Democratic Party are threatening to derail that deal, including a public debate over whether or not raising the federal minimum wage should be part of the bill and just how many Americans should get a $1,400 stimulus check, as CNN's Caitlin Collins reports. Returning to Washington today, President Biden immediately faced questions about his predecessor's looming impeachment trial. Look, we've got an offer to come and testify. We've decided not to. We'll let the Senate work that out. For weeks, Biden has gone out of his way to avoid weighing in on former President Trump's fate, as aides say he'll be too busy to watch the proceedings. I think it's clear uh, from his schedule uh, and from his intention, he will not spend uh, too much time watching the proceedings of any time uh, over the course of this week. Biden is set to counter-program Trump's trial as he attempts to keep the focus on his legislative debut, a $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package. We've already announced his plans to go visit the NIH, to go visit the Department of Defense. Biden has moved on from courting Republican support and is now focusing on fast-tracking the bill with only Democrats on his side. Obviously, it's the most likely path at this point is through a reconciliation process. But now Democrats must battle it out over the bill and whether to include Biden's $15 minimum wage proposal, which he hinted in an interview Friday wouldn't make the final cut. Apparently that's not going to occur because of the rules of the United States Senate. So you're saying the minimum wage won't be in this? My guess is it will not be in it. But that was before the Senate parliamentarian had ruled whether the minimum wage requirement could be included. Who had told him that it wasn't going to make it through likely? Well, uh, the president was uh, in uh, Congress for, in the Senate for 36 years. Uh, Again, it still has not worked its way through the process, and that can take uh, a bit of time, and we certainly defer to the parliamentarian. While Biden seemed ready to move on without the minimum wage increase included for now, other progressives are still pushing for it. I can tell you, as chairman of the Budget Committee, we have a, a room full of lawyers working as hard as we can to make the case to the parliamentarian that, in fact, raising the minimum wage will have significant budget implications. Now, Jake, Democrats are also planning a child tax credit that would be part of this coronavirus relief proposal. Right now, the framework is about $3,600 for children, per children, under six years of age, about 3000 going up until 17 years of age. Of course, that would phase out depending on how much money the parents were making, about $75,000 for individuals, $150,000 for couples. Though we should note that is far from final, and it's still got to go through the Senate as they're working on this proposal right now as it is. And, Caitlin, what- White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki today trying to clean up uh, President Biden's comments after he told Nora O'Donnell that former President Trump should not get intelligence briefings because of his, quote, erratic behavior. Yeah, Jake, that was news in and of itself that a a current president would say that about a former president because, of course, former presidents enjoyed that access as a courtesy. But the White House is now saying that this is not a final decision that President Biden has made. And instead, they are still going to rely on those intelligence officials for what this decision should be. He was expressing his concern about former President Trump receiving access to sensitive intelligence. Uh, But he also has deep trust in his intelligence, own intelligence team, to make a determination about how to provide intelligence information if at any point the former president requests a briefing. So that last part there is also critical to this, Jake, because then I later asked Jen Psaki to clarify, has President Trump asked for an intelligence briefing? And she said not that she knows of. They could just blame this all on Trump's former deputy director of national security uh, or national intelligence, Sue Gordon, who's the one who raised this. I don't know why they're handling this so clumsily. Uh, Caitlin Collins, uh, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Let's bring in my team to discuss. Gloria, uh, let's first start with this balancing act for Democrats. You heard Caitlin detailing these emerging splits in the Democratic Party, specifically over the minimum wage uh, and the stimulus checks. Who should get them? What the threshold is uh, for income? Is there a risk here that Biden's first big bet, this COVID relief deal, ends up falling apart? Well, there is there is a risk. And uh, let me tell you two words. Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin is somebody 
who is a very moderate Democrat, West Virginia. And he came out and said, and he got other moderates to agree with him to say, look, I don't want it to be 150000 I'd rather it were a $100,000 top uh, earning per couple if you're to get these stimulus checks. And, you know, now it's much more than that. So I think there's going to have to be some give on the targeting of these stimulus checks. And the president has indicated that, that that might be okay with him. The minimum wage, you know, you heard Bernie Sanders say they're going to try and find a way to make this happen. But the president kind of threw in the towel when he spoke with Nora O'Donnell. And that's got lots of progressives upset. So he's got to keep his 50 votes together, and that's becoming more and more difficult. Meanwhile, Aisha, progressives are hammering Biden and Senate Democrats uh, for talking about the stimulus check being $1,400 for individuals. The way that they get that figure is you combine with the December checks for $600 per individual. That makes $2,000. But after the December deal passed in January, Biden, Harris, Warnock and Ossoff in Georgia, they were talking about cutting a $1,400 stimulus check. They were talking about $2,000. Uh, as our friend Mehdi uh, Hassan says, this is a broken promise in, in the view of progressives. Is that fair? Well, you know, I think this is something that was dealt with. And as you said earlier, this was something that was dealt with a, a bit clumsily. Uh, this issue of whether it was going, whether the $600 was a down payment um, on, you know, what and that they would get $2,000. But certainly some voters likely heard that they were going to get $2,000 checks. And now they're talking about $1,400 checks. And it may not even go to the same people um, or not as many people may get the $1,400 checks. So this is something um, about messaging and the message that you send forth and being clear when you're campaigning and making those promises exactly what people are going to get because they're going to know what shows up in their bank account. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I am skeptical of whether people or how much you know, individuals are really looking at, okay, am I going to get $1,400? Am I going to get $2,000? I, I think that because they got the $600 in the past, I'm not sure whether voters, how much they will hold Democrats to account for that. But overall, people are looking for help. They're looking for something that is going to make a difference. And I think that if they don't see some material changes in their, you know, their own predicaments in their own life, uh, that's what's going to what Democrats are going to have to pay a price for. And Gloria, while dealing with all this, the new Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is also trying to fend off possible primary challengers from the progressive left. At home in New York, the New York Times writes, quote, armed with a sweeping set of policy promises, he's courting the activists, organizers and next generation elected officials in New York who would likely make up the backbone of any effort to dethrone him should one ever arise. It's kind of the uh, Ed Markey approach to right. keeping keeping his Senate seat, uh, fending mm -hmm. off the challenge from Joe Kennedy. Uh, is there a risk that if it's a smaller than expected COVID deal that could hurt Schumer? Sure. Uh, look, he's trying to cover his left flank, and uh, it's a it's a really large problem. I mean, you have AOC out there saying that you can't cut back the income level of those who are entitled to get these checks, pushing for the minimum wage increase, and you have the president listening. Uh, to moderates within his own party. He's also listening to some Republicans on that to target the stimulus a little bit more. Everybody knows uh, Joe Biden of yore is somebody who actually liked to negotiate and cut these deals, but he feels pressure from the left as well. So where they end up is going to be very important to Chuck Schumer. Aisha, meanwhile, Republicans are dealing with much bigger uh, fights over much more ridiculous issues, the issue of whether or not they should double down with liars and conspiracy theorists. Uh, Axios is reporting that Republican leader Kevin McCarthy tried to get Liz Cheney to apologize for voting to impeach President Trump in front of the Republican caucus last week. She did not. She's still not backing down. Take a listen. We have to make sure that we uh, are able to convey to the American voters we are the party of responsibility, we are the party of truth, uh, that we actually can be trusted to handle the challenges this nation faces like COVID. Uh, and, and that's going to require us to focus on substance and policy and issues going forward. But, but we should not be embracing the former president. We should not be embracing Trump. How many Republicans uh, do you think agree with her? 
Well, publicly, I, I don't think you're going to get a whole bunch of them. I mean, you'll have Liz Cheney's, the Liz Cheney's of the world, Mitt Romney in the Senate and some others, uh, you know, Ben Sass. Uh, but you're not going to have, you know, uh, and we've seen in the Senate, in the House that uh, you, you're not going to have that support or that turning away from president, from former President Trump. You're just not seeing that. Uh, Liz Cheney is, you know, basically said, you know, hold the vote on me. See, you know, and she she's still in her number three spot. And so now she is emboldened and she's making a bet. Or she, you know, uh, it, it can happen. She may be standing on principle that the idea that, you know, this party, that Trump cannot be the future of the Republican Party. That is the stand she's taking. It will be interesting to see in the future what voters say. What does the base of the Republican Party say? Because right now they have not broken with Trump. So will they make the Liz Cheney's of the world and, uh, you know, others who have been critical, will they make them pay? And because they're the ones that are really going to decide what the future of the Republican Party is. Yeah. Ayesha Roscoe and Gloria Borgia, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, We'll be right back. You're listening to this podcast, so it's pretty safe to assume that you follow the news. During times like these, full of anxiety and uncertainty, it's important to manage your stress and make sure you're getting a good night's sleep. Calm is a powerful app that helps you achieve just that. Inside Calm, you'll find relaxing soundscapes, guided meditations, and over a hundred sleep stories narrated by soothing voices like Stephen Fry, Kelly Rowland, and Laura Dern. And they're adding new content every week, all of it designed to help you ease stress and rest well. Over 85 million people around the world use Calm to take care of their minds and sleep better. And if you go to calm.com slash the lead, for a limited time, you'll get 40% off a Calm premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of programming. Get the Calm app and transform the way you sleep. Start today at calm.com slash the lead. In Conflict of Interest Watch and our politics lead, in December, I had a simple question for then president elect Joe Biden. Will your brothers, uh, will your son take leave from any business interests, not just foreign, but any business interests that might create any uh, even appearance of impropriety? My son, my family will not be involved in any business, any enterprise that is in conflict with or appears to be in conflict, whether it's appropriate distance from the presidency and government. It's not clear, however, if the Florida law firm that the president's brother, uh, Frank, works for is honoring that pledge. Frank Biden is a senior advisor for the Berman Law Group. He's not an attorney, but he's a senior advisor, and he's profiled prominently on the firm's website. The firm also featured Frank Biden's ties to the president in a Florida newspaper ad that just happened to run on Inauguration Day. To discuss, let's bring in Walter Schaub. He was director of the Office of Government uh, and Ethics and, and left under Trump in 2017. We should note before angry tweets that Walter has been a fierce critic of the sleaze and the thousands of conflicts of interest that occurred during the Trump years. So he's been consistent. Let's talk about the Biden, though, if we can, Walter. Last year, this law firm filed two lawsuits against China related to the pandemic. The firm told CNN, quote, there have been no discussions including between the firm, including Frank Biden, with President Biden, the campaign transition or administration about the law firm or any cases, including China related matters, nor will there be. The White House says uh, that its counsel's office, family representatives have a process to address potential conflicts of interest. The law firm may not have done anything wrong. What do you think here? Is there a problem, at least with the appearance of a conflict of interest? I think there is a problem here, and it's an appearance problem, admittedly, but appearance matters in a period when we're trying to rebuild after what was inarguably the most unethical presidency in our history. We have Joe Biden coming in as a reformer and having pledged that there would be a real distance between him and his family, and already we've seen Frank Biden's law firm touting his connection Uh, to the firm and noting that he's a relative of the president's, you know, I think it's not enough for the White House to tell us they have a mysterious process of some sort. I'd like them to tell us what that process is. And although it's not required by the rules, we're in a period when we're rebuilding from ethical failure. So I'd like to hear the president say, 
that he has asked his brother to stop touting the connection to the White House. Now, he can't control his brother, but he certainly can reassure us that he has asked him. He can share what the process they've put in place is.